Amigas, amigos, y non-binarios, Tanchi Bonsoir, and welcome to another terrible episode of The Service, because today we're going to be talking about some very horrifying people and a national tragedy. By the time this airs, you're probably already pretty familiar with the events that took place in Nashville, where a shooter unfortunately killed three children and three adults in a horrifying tragedy, the likes of which I'm not here to defend in any way, shape, or form. It's a horrifying loss of life, and one that can't be understated, and certainly at this time, people are trying to, as they always do, politicize this in a variety of ways. Now, the same cries from the left and the liberals are are pretty much the ones that you would hear asking for fair gun control, things like perhaps a federal licensing program similar to countries like Canada, because this seems to be an issue within the Judeo-Christian Western world that is uniquely American. This doesn't change the fact that every single time there is a mass shooting, both sides of the fence will begin to politicize this for their own aims. It doesn't matter if someone is trying to push through comprehensive legislative gun reform or whatever the hell the right has been doing over the past 48 hours. You see, the Matt Walshes, the Ben Shapiros, the Daily Wires, the Jordan Petersons, the Tim Pool, all of the ghouls, from the Michael Knowles to the Candace Owens, have been pushing a narrative that this has something to do with trans ideology. The shooter identifies as he, him, meaning that it is a trans man, which, I mean, even though the fact that 98% of all mass shootings are done by cis men, and of the 2% that are done by women, they are sometimes accomplices to those same cis male shooters. But that hasn't stopped the right from pushing this brand new trans terrorist ideology. You're not supposed to talk about any of this, apparently. And the authorities in Nashville certainly are not planning to talk about it. They're doing their best not to. You see, now they feel trans people are willing to attack cis people in some form of vengeance. There is, in fact, a trans lobby, if you will, that is trying to convince your children to not only become trans, but if you do not accept them, if you do not give them exactly what they want, well, then they will attack. Which, of course, is absurd, because if you look at every single shooting from 2018 until now, in nearly every case, they have been cis. There are three examples of trans shooters within that same amount of time, and nearly 3,000 examples of cis shooters shooters within that same period. And here's the thing, even at its most conservative estimate of how many trans people exist, this would put trans people at a ratio of over four times less likely than cis people to commit mass shootings. Ergo, trans people are more often the victims of mass shootings than they are the perpetrators by ratio of their population. And I know Jack Pacific, the white supremacist, has a lot of trouble with the by ratios, but here are the stats and graphs for you to be able to see it quickly and absorb this information. So is there a call right now to end all cis people, to stop all cis men? I know they're saying that it was a combination of testosterone and other drugs that may have caused a trans man to commit this act of violence, but if that was the argument, if men can be prone to more violence because of their testosterone, wouldn't the logical conclusion then be that they're actually asking to force feminize all men? Oh my God, you look great, by the way. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, you know, Tucker on Network TV. Yeah. Well, that brings us to the right-wing pundits who are pushing a lot of this. Now, I want to quickly point out, if we're going to look at some of these people, we should discuss Matt Walsh first and foremost. So this puts it very well. Let's compare Matt Walsh's reaction to the Nashville Covenant School shooting with other shootings that involved the murder of very young children. I've been telling you for a long time that left-wing trans extremists are violent, dangerous people who have been made being to feel absolutely entitled to say and do whatever they want. The deranged claims of genocide are an open invitation to violence. It will get worse from here. Trans activists believe that those who oppose them should die. I don't know why I'm starting to sound like a Kentucky Southerner. I know this because a great many of them have told me this. They've always communicated the message to me and my family in many ways. They think the right uh, to affirmation supersedes their own right to live. Uh, I'm, I'm still working on my Matt Walsh. The media wants to talk about how, why a homicidal freak got his hands on a gun, but they never want to talk about how and why he was a homicidal freak to begin with. This piece of garbage slaughtered elementary school students, incomprehensible, praying for the parents of these children. May the demon burn in hell for his crimes. After a bunch of yahoos trespassed the capital, they locked down the city like Fort Knox and surrounded the place with, quote, even more armed security. Yet our kids are slaughtered in school shootings and we can't all agree that there should be armed security protecting them? Madness. More guns. The solution to people being killed with guns is, of course, more guns. You should just literally throw guns at it. Just launch all the guns at once. 
It's probably time for me to do a patented PSA and say that I'm not here to take away your guns. In fact, I believe that you should have a right to a well-armed, uh, let's just say well-regulated militia. And the original Second Amendment to the Constitution actually really only applied to uh, land-owning white people, and it was intentionally used to be able to control slaves. So again, yes, a well-regulated Virginia militia uh, it should have the right to bear arms. That is the Second Amendment to the Constitution. I don't think it's going to be unconstitutional to also say that you should have some form of protecting your citizenry from dangerous people obtaining vast amounts of weapons that are used in war. I think that's a reasonable expectation. See, here's the system that and how it works in Canada. In Canada, you have to get a gun license. In order to get a gun license, you have to take a two-day course. This will teach you gun safety, which is an important thing when you want to handle and use a firearm. You then have to have your spouse or your ex sign off on the fact that you want to acquire and own firearms, at which point you get a gun license. Gun licenses can be revoked and they have to be renewed. This system allows for the government to be able to know where and what guns you have. And if the police need, they will know when you transport handguns which are always in safe lock boxes from one place to another. This results in much lower per capita killings and mass shootings in Canada by firearms than the United States. This is how Matt Walsh responded to a shooting at a Colorado Planned Parenthood that killed a police officer and two civilians, by the way. And you would think that would be something that most conservatives were very concerned about, but you'd be wrong. Matt Walsh, yes. This is a perfectly appropriate time to point out that Planned Parenthood is a demonic cartel of bloodthirsty butchers. If any side should tone down their rhetoric because of the PP attack, it's the side whose rhetoric explicitly condones the murder of humans. Interesting fact, Planned Parenthood kills 100 times more people in a day than alleged quote anti-abortion extremists have killed in 40 years. And it somehow gets worse. What happens if the mass shooter is a white supremacist who murders a bunch of black people because he believes in great replacement conspiracy theories spread by Tucker Carlson and Lauren Southern? Daily Wire host says the white supremacist great replacement conspiracy is quote, just a fact. Because although this, I was going to call him a kid, but he's 18 years old, this man, let us see how quick he did that by the way. Well, this young boy had the future ahead of him. We have to find out what exactly went wrong. How did we how did we wrong this individual? This man's ideology is a mess. He's again a lunatic all over the place. He does mention the so-called great replacement theory, and this is what they're trying to hang around the neck of Tucker Carlson, Fox News, really any conservative, myself included. Because Tucker Carlson and other conservatives have in the past pointed out that Democrats have been very open about the fact that, you know, they want to minimize what they call whiteness in America. And they want to bring in voters, you know, from other countries. They don't want voters voter ID laws, you know, they want to be able to bring in voters and have them vote. I just noticed how Valley Girl Matt Walsh talks when you actually type out his stuff. You know, like, well, they want to minimize what they call whiteness in America. And they want to bring in voters, you know, from other countries. They don't want voter ID laws, you know. They want to be able to bring in the voters and have them vote because they know they're going to be voting Democrat. So they want to replace, especially the white male voters, with voters who they think are going to be beholden to them. Now, this isn't a conspiracy theory. It is. It's an anti-Semitic, racist conspiracy theory. There's nothing wild or speculative about it. It's just a fact. And one of the ways you know that it's a fact is the left and the media, the New York Times, CNN, they've been very open about it many times. So if it is a theory, if the Great Replacement Theory is a theory, then it's a theory propagated by the left. They're the ones who go around talking about the supposed scourge of whiteness. What are we supposed to do to minimize whiteness? And how are we going to fight against whiteness? So they say all of that. Then on the right, if we notice that they've said that and pointed out out, oh, they've said these things, and we're the ones somehow responsible for the conspiracy theory. If you go back in time and get rid of slavery from the entire world, you have just, it's impossible to say what the world looks like right now. Actually, what we can say is that we'd all end up worse, all of us today would be in a worse spot if uh, slavery never existed at all across the entire globe. Because a change that significant would likely shift the course of events in a way that would mean none of us would even exist. It would be a world full of other people who are not us. So I know that I benefit today from virtually everything my ancestors did. But the colonization that brought Europeans to this part of the world hundreds of years ago, um, that was good. Not everything that happened during those many centuries was good, obviously. History is not that simple. People can commit evil in the pursuit of a worthwhile goal. That happens all the time. But uh, and, and nobody would ever say that the conquerors and colonizers of this land were perfect angels. But we should celebrate them 
and we should celebrate what they achieved. Far more advanced civilization came along and claimed it. That's the way of the world. And it's good that it happened. Our swan song right now, we're the last of the Mohicans, the last of the Anglos. He's the first person to jump to that conclusion. But all the studies we've seen, and just when you look around yourself, that's what you see. Now, there might be some people that say, well, okay, so what? Um, pick Neil. It's not, you know, still people living here. Does, so so maybe, the, yeah. maybe the races mix a little bit and it's no big deal. We all, we all move on. Well, it is because we're all dying off. It's, yes, that's what the problem is. It's not, that, it's not that we're just, you know, as the Mexicans come in, we magically meld with them and become like them. It's not like that. It's that we are dying off. Just like, just like any other species of animal does. We're dying, and the way that, that animals, there's two ways that animals die off. Well, three ways. One's disease, two is uh, deforestation, or they lose their, 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 their habitat, which, okay, look at us. And then the third one is that they stop reproducing. And, those, and usually all three of those things happen kind of silently. Allow me as a white person to explain that uh, no, no one is saying that you should get rid of white people, that you should eliminate all Germans, eliminate all Irish people from existence. No, no one is saying that. It's the concept of whiteness, as in you are better than other races, arbitrary invented things that we made up, because you're white. So uh, that's the part that you want to eliminate, is white supremacy, is having both a structure of white supremacy and also getting rid of full-blown white supremacists who believe in the superiority of the white race and that they should subjugate other races because of that. Matt Walsh also has never met a PDF conspiracy that he hasn't tried to defend if the very PDFs in question, the offenders themselves, happen to be Christians. In this case with the Covenant School, there is a very strong connection between Roy Moore, the co-author of Mike Huckabee's novels, and the school itself because of the PDF file John Perry. John Perry, a prolific author who co-wrote two books with former Arkansas governor and presidential candidate Mike Huckabee and co-wrote one with Alabama Supreme Court Justice Roy Moore, was accused of CP and CM in two separate lawsuits BuzzFeed News has found. A 2012 police investigation of Perry's alleged offenses found that the allegations of sexual battery were sustained but that the statute of limitations had expired. So you can already see how the right tries to manipulate the narrative every single time they get an opportunity to push their anti-trans or anti-LGBTQ plus agenda. They don't care that they're politicizing a tragic event to push their own narratives. They do that all the time. They will complain that the libs do it and then say, oh, well, why are you trying to pass gun control after all? Shouldn't we think about the children? And then they won't even let the bodies go to the morgue before they're like, well, this happens to be the trans ideology, trans agenda manifest. We're seeing it happen right now. You can see other vestiges of this in the wonderful database of Toilet Paper USA. Name this band, wrong answers only. Uh, this isn't related, but I, I will take a shot. If I'm being wholesome, I would call them the facts and the feelings. But if I'm listening to my true self, I'd have to go with Mr. Scurvy and the milked four and parlay so higher right chick has a new book out about how protecting children is necessary to stop them from being trans my book strengthens the family unit and teaches parents and kids to build a trusting relationship i, I this is an insurrectionist this is a person who participated in the january 6 attempted coup in the united states i would not want them teaching your children uh, they could teach them that if you don't like the outcome of a democratic election the best course of action is to try and smash buildings and then hang the vice president of the united states Candace Owens says, Pilia is the next step from transgenderism. If grown men like Dylan Mulvaney can self-identify as little girls and be accepted as such, then what will you say when self-identified, quote, little girls says that he likes little boys? They will say age is a social construct. There's a lot of projection going on here because I don't know what's going on with Dylan Mulvaney outside of the fact that Dylan Mulvaney seems to be very happy and she seems to be having a really good time on social media and in the, the general, I would say, favor of liberals right now. Is that why the right keeps melting down over her? I can't, I don't remember the last time I've seen a trans woman that had this much grasp on all of their psyches. Either way, um, this is the exact same thing that the bad guys in World War II were doing insane. They were constantly trying to associate being gay, being trans, being LGBTQ+, being queer in general, with being a PDF file, and using that in order to dehumanize them, target them, and then persecute them. Everyone you're friends with and know, Candace loves doing drag. Michael Knowles, 
has done drag performances. Michael Knowles has dressed up as Elizabeth Warren in a wig. My word, yes, it was very boring and very racist, but hell, he's done it. Steven Crowder's done it. Rudy Giuliani's done it. Jordan Peterson's done it. All of your favorite heroes and allies love doing drag. Are they doing that intentionally because they want to target and groom children? Or are they doing it because they like dressing up and doing a little bit of theater and also being assholes? Steven Crowder. Transgender people have a 42% attempted suicide rate. American slaves and Jews in concentration camps didn't commit suicide at 19 times more than the general population. I have to wonder, when you were, like, even thinking this, was there any part of your mind, body, or soul, my brother in Christ, that didn't stop at a single second of it and think, yeah, this is wrong. This this is bad. This is this is not only a really bad look, it's it's legitimately disturbing of me to have thought this and to now type it out and put it out there as a matter of public discourse. Knowledge, if you will, out there forever. I mean, he could delete this. I don't think he's going to. It's not kind of like the... T he deletes tweets when he realizes, oh, whoa, I've actually been a PDF file. Like when he basically was sexualizing a 14 to 16-year-old Greta Thunberg. And then at that point, he deleted that tweet. In this case, it's... It's, just, it's on brand. Let's just say that. You're, you're definitely getting what you expect. Jerk. Just two days after six Christians get murdered in cold blood by a deranged trans terrorist, Joe Biden thinks it's a good time to lecture America on the need to invest and protect in LGBTQ plus individuals. What an utter disgrace this man is to America. And what's interesting about this is that it's been mathematically proven that every single time Joe Biden disgraces the country, Charlie Kirk's face shrinks just a little bit. Charlie Kirk compares trans people to homeless encampments. At, at the, it's a very complex issue. I have spent some time in homeless encampments and going through it. There is a, there is a group of people there that, of course, are mentally, you know, going through struggles and they need help and they need compassionate care. However, this goes to the entire trans thing as well. We should not have to accommodate clean streets, safe streets, and a society that functions because of somebody else's problem. And so you think about it, it's exactly the same thing as the trans thing, right? That I have- This is so ridiculous because of how interconnected every part of society is. Like, it's not even the, uh, we live in a society TM kind of stuff. It's frankly speaking, if you have a situation in which certain aspects of society are paid through taxation, uh, you know, we collectively come together as a team. We're like, hey, let's let's build a society. Let's make roads. Let's build schools. Let's have some hospitals. And then the further you go towards, let's say, the sock dems, it's like, why don't we pay for things like housing? Why don't we pay for things like mental health services, dental care, pharmaceutical care, all that kind of stuff? Why don't we pay for free education? As you do that, lo and behold, you have better outcomes. It seems across the board, when you look at happiness rating indexes or just the quality of life, generally speaking, the rates of infant mortality, uh, the rates of people who die from preventable or curable diseases, it seems like they have very good outcomes in the countries and societies who are willing to invest a lot in their own infrastructure. So all that being said, Charlie, if you have a problem with homeless people, there's a lot of reasons for that. Hey, if the feds up the interest rate, and I know you hate the feds, uh, all of a sudden there's a bit of a windfall effect, right? Everyone who is a homeowner who has mortgages and who rents out, suddenly their mortgages are more expensive, so they increase their rents. As they increase their rents, the people who pay rent may not be able to afford it. A lot of people can become working poor. There are homeless working poor. There are people who live in their cars or live in their friends' uh, couches and basements who are also working full-time jobs. They're not the depraved homeless like you might think. And in those cases, yes, there is a problem happening with the system. We shouldn't have a world in which a very small amount of white dudes control half the wealth of the population of the rest of the world. There is something fundamentally wrong here, something that we can fix and that we can isolate and identify and be like, hey, there's a better way to do wealth redistribution that won't result in so much homelessness on the street. Even if you hate homeless people, even if it gets you off Charlie Kirk to piss on their faces, well, guess what? If you do housing for solutions, you can get rid of the homeless problem in a humane way that ultimately will save you the taxpayer money in the long term. Agatha Chocolate says, in six words or fewer, write the story about this photo. Quote, some women have penises, he concluded. Ben Shapiro, you can end this whenever you want, all right? If you at any point want to stop obsessing over trans women's cocks, at that point, you will be liberated, friend. I feel like this is a nightmare of your own design. 
It's so frequent that you see someone like Ben Shapiro being like, Oh, they won't leave us alone. The trans agenda, trans penises everywhere. My browser history, my tabs. God, God, why is there so much trans porn all over the place? Disgusting, depraved. You do it to yourself. Just you. You and no one else. You do it to yourself. That's what really hurts. Fear pervades Tennessee's trans community amid focus on Nashville shooters' gender identity. We were already fearing for our lives, now it's even worse. And you know why? Because uh, assholes like the Daily Wire and Ben Shapiro weaponize this shit. When they see an act of violence committed by a trans person, it's the fucking, uh, you know, transphobia miss. It's, it's the best day of the year, you know? It's like, oh god damn, yes, now we got our narrative. We told you trans people can be violent. No one said they can't. No one is a monolith. Trans people can be violent. Cis people can be violent. But guess what? Who are the majority of mass shooters? They are cis men. 98% of all mass shooters are cis men. Again, trans people are four times, over four times, less likely to be mass shooters than cis people. Cis people are the perpetrators. Should we restrict the rights of all cis people? Should we prevent cis people from being able to access certain buildings, washrooms? Should we take away their health care all of a sudden? Trans person murders Christian school children. Media. But how does this affect trans people? Because of you. Daily Wire. That's, that, that's that because of you. All, all of you are vilifying all trans people now as a monolith. You're suggesting that being trans can lead to violent outcomes. Instead of, hey, all of our really shitty societal stigma and being assholes towards trans people, that can lead to negative outcomes. When asked why people in the trans community experience SA, uh, the most frequent reason is societal stigma. So, so you assholes doing this kind of shit? Yes, that can increase fears to the trans community. Alejandro Caraballo says, It's so blatant that Tucker is trying to incite violence against trans folk and the LGBTQ community. He knows exactly what he's doing and he's relishing in the opportunity to do so. Trans killer. The trans movement is targeting Christians. <sighs> the right was trying to convince all of us that the shooter in question, despite the fact that he had been known to utter anti-LGBTQ slurs in public, he had been known to run a goddamn neo-Nazi website, his father, when he found out that he committed an act of mass violence, actually said, Oh, but he's not gay, is he? He was relieved to find out that his son is not gay. He was more excited to find out that his son was not gay than the fact that his son is a mass murderer. Like, I don't know about you, but if I was finding out that a family member had committed an act of mass murder, whose cocks they like to suck would probably be pretty near the very bottom of my concern list. So it's probably a family that was really reinforcing anti-gay stereotypes. And this could have been a self-hating queer person. This could have been a self-hating non-binary person. But the fact that the person went by he, him pronouns, by his mother, even up to the day of the shooting, uh, by all of his relatives, including every single version that he has uh, in terms of his online history, he also used he, him pronouns, the fact that after committing an act of violence that can definitely be categorized as a hate crime, especially with all that other evidence that I'm mentioning, well, it does stand to reason that this individual might want to suddenly self-identify as non-binary in order to protect themselves, and in this case I will say himself because you do not get to use your gender identity to defend attacks against the queer community. It's not a defense. It's not a shield. Carlson's ethnically pure white yogurt. We keep the good cultures in and the bad cultures out. No flavor. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's funny. Good memes. Funny memes. I just want to say this to all my trans brothers, sisters, and non-binary friends. I know it seems scary out there. A lot of the right wing right now is ramping up some of the most horrifying rhetoric you can imagine. The thing that does give me hope is that when I look at normie Twitter or normie social media or just other aspects of the internet that isn't hyper focused on just right wing far right radicalization, the neo reactionaries, the alt right, uh, the far right, uh, the, the neo Nazis, all of them, it seems overwhelmingly that they do not hate trans people the same way the far right does. These are the Christian nationalists. These are the Christian fascists. These are the people who have hyper fixated upon trans people to such a degree where they talk about them more online than trans people do. And a large reason for that happens to be that they are turning this into the centerpiece of their culture war because it is one of the last forms of bigotry they can perform openly and proudly and not be condemned for it. Because ultimately, if they were doing the same thing that they did during the gay panic, which is almost play-by-play -play the same moves, if they were doing that today, it wouldn't play as well. Especially even with mainstream sites like YouTube and all that. To YouTube, by the way, the fact that you amplify the Daily Wire, the fact that you amplify Michael Knowles, Matt Walsh, Candace Owens, all of these individuals who want LGBTQ people to not exist, that is horrifying and frightening. Please, please, I beg you, 
take a stance, do something about this. Stop letting these videos be monetized. Stop letting these videos be amplified by the algorithm. If they are saying outright things like they do not want transgenderism to exist in society, that they want to quote, eradicate transgenderism from society. Why are those videos still up? That's, that's someone saying things in the strongest possible terms. When, when they tell you this, please believe them. They mean it. Thanks for watching everybody. Could you please do all those things? Cause honestly, the algorithm buries any of the content that we make on these kind of channels, especially if it happens to be pro LGBTQ plus these days. So go down there, the comments, the likes, the bell icon, all of that helps out immensely. Sharing it on Reddit threads and forums, that helps out a ton too. If you can go to patreon.com slash the surfs and help us out financially, that actually helps create a lot of the content that we are now producing in our worker cooperative of which I'm incredibly excited and proud to announce that we have so many new projects on the go. We got Mind Explosion. It's the channel that actually talks about incredible facts in a really, really cheesy, terrible BuzzFeed way, but then we insert agitprop into the middle of every episode. They're really silly, fun, and we're having a great time making them. We also have the Surf Times, where we do our live stream uploads. We got Surfs at the Cinema. We're now going to do long-form documentary video essays on movies and stuff, and talk about the capitalist perspective and how it influences that. If you want to help this magnitude of content coming your way and help us produce it, please go to patreon.com slash the surfs. It'll really help us out. In the meantime, I love you all. You're valid. Thank you for watching. Please keep sharing. And thanks for all the nice comments on these new style of videos. We're going to keep making them and getting them out just for you. Do you enjoy the surfs but prefer not to have to use your eyeballs? Many are saying this. Well, we've got the solution for you. It's the Surf Times in podcast form. Available on most major podcasting networks now. If you enjoy it, please consider leaving a good review and feedback because it really helps the show out, apparently, and it's free. Just like the podcast. To our gods, Xander Corvus and Peyton L. Juice, we shall spend many a generations building mighty cathedrals in your honor. To our monarch, Tom Spiker, we are but your oafish jesters, here to offer you a laugh at any opportunity. To our brave knights of the round table, Rachel K., Izzy Solidarity, Victoria Bell, Sebastian Demel, Mark Harmon, Benji Arney, Scary Earth Human, Tony, DM Rivera, Resident Scarecrow, Sir Nickus, Cheryl Alvarez, Ruby Kelly, Brandon, Words Greenwood, Everything Important, Hegbird Celine, Matthew Scarborough, Stellar Vision, Ariane McCarthy, Doug Katie, Daniel Sutton, Jenna Tao, Dark Puppy, Quiet185, Anna Loves Riley, Omni, Riley and Anna, Poodle Hawk, Multi Mondi, Trevbot EXE, Brian Ephraim, Anthropophojack, Catherine, Ramon Acosta, Nkosin, Ralph Parler, Violent Orchard, Political Puppy, La Media Panza, Todd Buckingham, and Todd Lajeunesse. We salute our valiant heroes off to fight injustice everywhere.